Hello everyone, hope you are doing well. Today I'll talk about the dental pulp. So what we are going to discuss in this lecture is what is dental pulp? What are the functions of dental pulp? We will briefly talk about the cells that are present within the dental pulp. And at the, at the end, we, I'll talk about the zones, the histological zones that are present within the dental pulp. So watch this video till the end. Dental pulp is a soft vascular connective tissue that occupies the central portion of the tooth. So this is a picture of the longitudinal section of an anterior tooth. Here you can see in the center, this is the dental pulp. And the dental pulp is surrounded by the dentine, both in the coronal part as well as in the radicular part. The dental pulp, it is divided into two main compartments. One is the coronal pulp, the part of the dental pulp that is present within the crown of the tooth. And the second part is the radicular pulp. And the radicular pulp is a part of the dental pulp that is present in the root of the tooth. So this is a picture of the longitudinal section of a molar. So above the cemento enamel junction, this is enamel and this is cementum. So above this cemento enamel junction is the coronal pulp. In the root, this portion of the dental pulp is the radicular pulp. So pulp chamber, it is a space in the coronal part in which the coronal pulp is present, whereas the root canal or the pulp canal is a portion of the tooth in which the radicular pulp is present. Another important terms are the pulp horn and the apical foramen. The pulp horn is the extension of the pulp chamber below the cusps or the incisal edges. So you can see these are the pulp horns. The restorations must be carefully placed in these areas because during placement of restoration, these pulp horns can be exposed. The second important landmark is the, is the apical foramen. So apical foramen is the opening of the pulp chamber at the apex of the tooth. So this is one opening over here and another opening is over here. So from the apical foramen, the nerve and the blood vessels, they enter and leave the tooth. In the developing tooth, this apical foramen is very large. Uh, whereas in a fully developed tooth like this, the apical foramen, it is very small. There, sometimes there are accessory foramens, uh, usually in the furcation areas or in the apical third portion. In this portion, sometimes there are some accessory foramens. So the nerve and the blood vessels, they enter and leave the tooth, as I have already mentioned. So uh, what are the functions of the dental pulp? So there are four main functions of the dental pulp. So let's discuss them one by one. So number one function is the formative function. These are the odontoblasts. These odontoblasts, they help in the formation of dentine. So this is the formative function. So initially an unmineralized matrix is deposited that is later mineralized to form a mature dentine. So you can see a thin layer of unmineralized matrix of dentine known as pre-dentine that is deposited by these odontoblasts that later mineralized to form a mature dentine. Another important function is the nutritive function. As you know, dentine is basically a avascular tissue. So the pulp, it has rich blood supply that provide nutrition to the odontoblasts that are the main cells that uh, help in the formation of dentine. And additionally, it also provides nutrition to the dentine that is present above these odontoblasts. This is an unmineralized layer of dentine known as pre-dentine. Another important function of a dental pulp is the protective function. The dental pulp, it has a rich nerve supply. And this nerve supply, it provides sensation of pain in case of dental caries or dental trauma. 
repetitive function. New dentine is formed, as you can see in this picture, just below the carious dentine. So this new dentine is either deposited by the pre-existing odontoblasts that are present at the periphery of the dental pulp or by a newly differentiated cells. The reparative dentine is also formed after a, after a deep restoration or after a trauma. The histologically, uh, there are four zones uh, within the dental pulp. Number first zone is the odontoblastic zones, zone. So this is longitudinal section of histology of the dental pulp, of the dentine pulp complex. These are the dentine tubules. These are the odontoblast cell bodies that are lining the periphery of the dental pulp. And the processes are inside the dental or uh, inside the dentinal tubules. So these odontoblasts that are lining the periphery of the dental pulp, they form the odontoblastic zone. So these cells they form the odontoblastic zone. The next zone is the cell-free zone. If you observe just below the odontoblast, you can see these are this is the cell-free zone, also known as the cell-free zone of wheel. So in this cell-free zone, uh, only the sub-odontoblastic plexus of Reshko are present. So these are the nerve plexus that are present within the cell-free zone of wheel. The next zone is a cell-rich zone. If you see just below this cell-free zone, there is a cell-rich zone. So cell-rich zone, as the name mentions, it it has it contains greater amount of cells. The central portion is the and the last zone is the pulp core. So this central portion is the pulp core, which contains less amount of cells as compared to the cell-rich zone, but it contains nerves and blood vessels. Now, uh, what are the different types of cells that are present within the dental pulp? Are the odontoblasts. Odontoblasts are the most prominent cells or most distinctive cells that you, that you can easily recognize within the dental pulp. So at this periphery, you can see these are the odontoblasts. So they are the most distinctive or most easily recognizable cells within the dental pulp. These are the cell bodies of the odontoblast and the cell processes are inside the dentinal tubule. Now the, the second cells are the fibroblasts. The fibroblasts, they are in the greatest number or they are the most numerous cells. So the odontoblasts are the most easily recognizable cell because of the size, while the fibroblasts are the most numerous cell. It means they are greater in number as, as compared to any other cell type within the dental pulp. They help in maintaining the matrix of the dental pulp because they synthesize the collagen as well as they also degrade the collagen. So that's how they maintain the pulp matrix. The next cell, cell population are the undifferentiated ectomesian chymal cells. So these undifferentiated ectomesian chymal cells, they may differentiate into odontoblasts or the fibroblasts whenever there's a requirement. For example, if there's a requirement of the tertiary dentine formation, so some of these odontoblasts and some of these undifferentiated ectomesian chymal cells, they may differentiate into odontoblast-like cells and they deposit the tertiary dentine. There are some immunocompetent cells such as macrophages to eliminate the dead cells that are present within the dental pulp. There are some T cells, B lymphocytes, they are also present within the dental pulp. All of these cells, they are present in a matrix and they are present in a ground substance. So this ground substance, it basically comprises of collagen type 1, that is the most prominent collagen that is present within the dental pulp. And also collagen type 3 is also present. So glycosaminoglycans, glycoprotein and water, they form this ground substance of the dental pulp.
This gram substance is basically it acts as a medium uh, for the transport of nutrients and the other substances within the dental bulb. Thank you very much uh, for watching. Uh, do give me your feedback in the comments. Uh, again, thank you very much and stay blessed.